uh, elder nomination forms back there on the back. This next coming up weekend is the last Sunday to turn those in. So if you've got an elder in mind, boy, this band feels good. I'm going to move over here a little bit. <laughs> it's blowing good right there. Whew. Well, how's everybody doing this morning? Everybody love Sunday? Love Sunday! Love Sunday. Love Sunday. You know, I, uh, <laughs> right? Especially here. Because we got good food. <laughs> we got good people here. That's what we got. And we got God here. God's here. Jesus is here. I'm going to tell y'all something. I, uh, it never ceases to amaze me the conversations that I have with you folks. Uh, and and I'm, I'm just going to be completely honest, 100% my view right here, right now. I love this church. Amen. I love the people in this church. Amen. It's, it's amazing. Okay, there's, there's, some, there's some people in this church that have way more faith than me. They can call on God to do something and God gives them an answer and they do it and I, it's like, why are you doing that? You're blowing my mind. I don't know why we're doing this right now. It's okay, God's got it. I said, well, why'd you call me? Oh. <laughs> you needed to hear it. I needed to hear it, I did. I needed to worry about it. It was my job to worry about it that day and I did, I did, but it's okay. But there's people that don't go to this church there's people that used to go to this church. There's people that have never been in a church that baffle me. Their, their train of thought is very curious to me. And I'm going to give you a case in point that led me to this sermon today. Honesty is the best policy, right? Yeah. Everybody agree with yeah. that? Yeah. Honest, be honest. God does not like a liar. We're going to get some scripture in a minute that says that. Okay, wicked tongues, the whole thing. God doesn't approve of that. But honesty to a point, folks, cannot become justification for your sin. And here's where I'm going. Was told by someone, no matter what you do in your marriage, you be honest. You be honest because that's the best thing for your marriage. If that means that you tell your spouse that you want to go uh, fishing on Valentine's Day or whether you want to have sex with another person. You be honest. You be honest because that's the best policy. Because God doesn't like a liar. I'm just going to tell you the truth. Yeah, I had to take a couple steps back on that one. I didn't know where the lightning was going to come down. But... But you see, that's, that's where we're going with honesty is not justification. You can't tell somebody, that we're not talking about that these jeans make my butt look big. Okay, that's another, that's another level of honesty. This right here, this right here, honesty is not, man, you can't, you, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know that the Bible says lying is, is a sin, but you can't tell your spouse that you want to have sex with another person. Why? Because that means you've already thought about it. Which means you've already committed adultery, which is what? A sin. Okay, so you can't use honesty as a justification for your sin. Okay? It's not, it's not, uh, I know you think you're doing the right thing, but you're not. You know? Uh, oh man, I, this had me, this had me, uh, my, stomach, my stomach was turning this week. I was upset. It bothered me. Okay? I, I, I didn't know how to convey my point because he just we just kept getting back to well I'm not lying well no you're not lying but you're still sinning okay and here's the other thing by you telling your spouse that you want to have sex with somebody else you're going to cause your spouse to stumble that's another sin we're, we're, we're just we're just piling sin on top of sin on top of sin in here and it's getting sick okay where does it stop all right where does it stop so honesty is not justification. Let's go to our first scripture. Let's just see what let's see. Let's just start with marriage, okay? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and just see what marriage is all about. Well, now I gotta deal with the fan blowing my pages up here, but it feels good. I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. Chapter 13. 
Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. And it keeps no record of being wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. It never loses faith. It's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Okay, so let's just pick a couple of things out of here right quick. Love is not rude. Do you think telling your spouse that you want to have sex with somebody else is rude? I think so. Just a little. Okay? It does not demand its own way. Do you think that was demanding anything? I'm just saying. I'm just bringing it up. Just throwing it out there. You know, it's just something for you to think about. That's all. No, I'm not, you know. Come on. Let's go, folks. It, 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 uh, it does not rejoice about injustice. That is an injustice because let me tell you something. That's not God's design for marriage. God's design for marriage is for one man and one woman to be together for eternity. Life. You say it, girl. It's not about let's get, let's get hooked up while we're happy and then when things get tough, we forget about why we were happy and we move on to something different. We move on to something else that makes us happy. That's not God's design. And you know, we talked about God's design last week for people's lives. This is not God's design for marriage. If you're thinking about somebody else, another man, another woman, while you're in a, in a committed relationship, a committed marriage, you're wrong. You've committed adultery. As soon as you thought about it, you coveted you became an adulterer at that point in time in your life. And that's something that people outside the church don't recognize. People outside the church have no idea what being covetous means or, or being an adulterer just in your mind. They don't, they don't recognize that. Until they've actually committed the physical act, then they believe they've become an adulterer. Okay? They, they believe at that point they've committed the sin. But what we gotta, what we got to explain to people is it starts... Way, way before that, the first time you ever, ever have a co-worker pass in front of you and you think about them in an Im immoral way, you have just become an adulterer. Didn't touch them, didn't talk to them, didn't kiss them, didn't do anything. Just thought about it. You just committed adultery. Now, are you going to go home and you're going to tell your wife, man, I had, I had immoral thoughts about my secretary today. No, you're not. Some people do, apparently. Okay, but truth is not justification for your sin. Just because you can say it out loud to somebody does not make it right. Okay? So, so let's, let's just take that for just a second. Truth and honesty and integrity. Let's think about that for just a second. Where in any, in any circumstance is telling someone the truth when you know it's going to cause pain, when you know it's going to cause them to stumble, when is that an honorable thing to do? Okay? You, I mean, that's, that's a tough one to think about when the Bible tells me not to lie. Yeah, but the Bible also tells you not to cause someone else to stumble. So where's that? Where's, it's a double-edged sword. Okay? Is there, is there an out for this? I don't know. I haven't found it yet. God hadn't put that on my heart yet. But I'm going to tell you what I did put on my heart. Honesty is not justification for your sin. It is not. It is not going to make it go away. It is not going to change the fact that you've already sinned. And you're just going to pile more sin on top of it by being honest. You know, Mama always said, if you can't, can't say nothing nice, don't say nothing at all. Right? Well, I guess... I guess what God's trying to tell us here is what comes out of us is what defiles us, right? We talked about that last week. So if you open up your mouth and you're, and you're spewing truths that are going to cause someone else to stumble or you're spewing out lies, you're sinning all the way around. Okay? So I don't, I don't know. I don't, have, I don't have the perfect answer for you on this. Okay? There's other, there's other scenarios, you know, I'm sure there's other scenarios, okay? 
and, and I just can't think of any. I, I, this one's been on my mind so much this week that I just couldn't think about anything else. I, I don't know of any other scenarios where this plays in, but this is hurtful. Okay, this is a this is a prideful thing for whoever's saying it. I can I can tell you this because I'm being honest. You know, this is about me. It's not about you. And that's that's basically what it boils down to. It boils down to somebody being selfish. So just keep in mind that there are some things that you just don't need to say. And you're going to have to deal with God no matter what. No matter what. Whether you lie or whether you tell the truth and hurt someone else and cause them to stumble, you have to deal with God. That is between you and Him. Nobody else. So keep that in mind before you open your mouth. I'm going to have to deal with God no matter what. I know what's in my heart. I know that there's sin in my heart and I'm going to have to deal with God. But do I need to, to drag my husband or wife down with me? Okay? Do I need to make them uh, uh, stumble and fall and, and think that, that our marriage is worthless and cause them to run into more sin? You know, it, let's just read it again. <laughs> Love is patient and kind. Love is patient and kind. We should not be trying to hurt our husband or our wife. It should not be a point. I mean, let me just, you know, when I first got married, it was, it was a game to me to see how many buttons I could push. Okay? What can I do to piss her off today? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's why I can't wear my wedding ring. No, no. That was a lie. That was a sin. No. I did have a fan thrown at me one time, though. No. Anyway, there, there's, uh, there's, there's, there's just, we should not be doing that. No matter how fun it is when you first get married to pick on each other and and cause each other to blow up and get mad and then make up so you can be happy. You know? Marriage, marriage is not, it's not about that, okay? If, if, if we could stop and we could talk to every person, every couple before they got married and just go through this one scripture just word by word and break it down, okay? The norm today is, is to get married because you're happy and when you're not happy to get a divorce. We need to think into the future, young couples. We need to think into our into our uh, golden years, okay? Rocking on the front porch years. Grandbabies, great grandbabies running around in the front yard hunting Easter egg years. That's what we gotta look forward to. Can we take our happiness today and project it out 50, 60, 70 years for that for that eternal marriage? Okay? Or are we just happy today? And we don't know when that's going to run out because nobody's really explained what marriage is to us. We don't really know what marriage is. We, we shacked up, we had a baby, and now we're going to get married. Okay? we got responsibilities now. And that's okay. I'm not, I'm not telling you that, that that's not, that that's not the, the correct reason to get married. If you love each other, okay, and, and you get married, it's got to be forever, though. That's the thing. All right? The... the, the, the the sin of, of, of what happened prior to the marriage is a sin, and yes, we know that. Sin is sin is sin. But love is patient, love is kind. It's not about what have you done for me lately? How come I don't have pancakes when I got up this morning? Where's my dinner when I get home? How come you didn't wash my work clothes? How come you didn't uh, take the trash out? How come you didn't feed the dog? It, I mean, and that's all things that happen in a marriage, right? Okay? And it. And Lord, let's not even throw in the dollar signs because everybody argues about money. How should we spend our money? How should we do this? What bill should we pay? Blah, 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 blah. I want a new boat. I want a new car. I want a new horse. I want a new horse trailer. It doesn't matter. We all have the same thing in common. The same thing in common. We married someone who we love. And we will do whatever it takes to live the biblical marriage in the sense that God designed it to be, okay? And that's the message we have to give out to people who don't know, who haven't been to church, who, who don't understand what a biblical marriage really is. We had a discussion uh, uh, 
Thursday night about uh, common law marriage. Common law marriage is not mentioned in the Bible. It is illegal in many states. But if you've lived together with someone for so many years, and I'm going to give you a perfect example. When my grandfather passed away, I found out that he never married my grandmother. Big shock to me. Okay, he was married to he was married to my mom's mom, got a divorce, married another woman, and that's who he that's who he spent the rest of his life with. And then when he passed away, we found out that he was never married. It was a common law marriage. They they lived. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Monogamous relationship for the rest of their lives. Okay? Never never spoke or, or saw of anyone else. It was just them two. We assumed they were married. We didn't know. My mom didn't know. Okay? But that's not a biblical marriage. Why is it not a biblical marriage? Because there was no public announcement of their intent to be married. If you look in the Bible, there are several different scriptures, several different stories about people who uh, got married. And every single one of them had a public ceremony announcing their intent. Most of the time nowadays, we call that a wedding. You come to the church, that's your public announcement. Okay, that's your intent. We're going to stay together forever. We're going to live by God's design. There, there's only one story in here so far that I've found where someone was living together and they weren't married. But they stood in front of the town and said, we intend on getting married. And eventually they did. Okay? So it doesn't, it, it doesn't actually boil down to how to work this. It doesn't actually boil down to what have you done for me lately, right? It, 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 it's far beyond being happy. People need to quit getting married because they're happy. Because happy goes away. Okay? Buddy's got a brand new pair of shoes on right now. He said, I'm going to break my brand new shoes in at the church this morning. Okay? In a couple of weeks, those brand new shoes are going to be old and dirty. Okay, in a couple more months, those shoes are going to have holes in them, and he's going to kick them to the side. They're going to be done with. So if you're getting married today because you're happy in six to seven months, when you get that itch and, and you're not as happy as you were six or seven months ago, you're going to want to kick your spouse to the side and go find somebody else that makes you happy. And that's wrong. Okay? Turn with me to Matthew 5.28 on page 736. I'm a little long-winded today. I apologize. You're good. Page 736. Who's laughing at me? I'm not long-winded normally. Maybe a little bit. Chapter 5, verse 28. <laughs> but I say, anyone who even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. You have already committed adultery. We just talked about it, okay? So, how many people used to watch Baywatch, Pam Anderson? Every one of y'all committed adultery. Every one of you men in here committed adultery already. That's what the Bible just told us. If you think about somebody in an immoral way, you have committed adultery. I'm an adulterer. If you watch Pamela Anderson on that show, you are an adulterer. Because we all were watching the same thing. Okay? That's, it's just that simple. It's that simple, folks. You cannot, you cannot take that honesty into your marriage and tell your wife about it. I've been thinking about my secretary. I've been thinking about, I've been thinking about my neighbor. I've been thinking about uh, the lady sits next to me at church. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay? Get the checker out or at your grocery store. Whatever. I, I, I was flipping through the Google and this page just popped up, baby. I don't know what happened. I don't know, I don't know how that got there. It's adultery, guys. Ladies, it's the same for you. Okay? You, you run down there to the LeBear's show or whatever. Huh? Adulterers, every one of you. Okay? Every one of you is a stinking adulterer. Because you can't go to that show and not think about something else. Am I wrong? It's, I'm, I'm being honest. We talk about the truth in here. Okay? You cannot even think about it. And if you're having those thoughts prior to you getting married... We need to sit down and we need to counsel. 
We need to sit down and we need to talk one-on-one, okay? Because there are things you've got to get out of your head about being happy, all right? And I'm not telling you that a long-term marriage cannot be happy because it can be. What I'm telling you is that the norm in today's society is sex makes me happy and you're giving me sex, so let's get married. That's how today's society leads to marriage. I'm sorry. That's the way it is. And then in six to seven months, when the sex is no longer there, you're not happy. So you go look for someone else to make you happy. The divorce rate in this country is astronomical. Astronomical. And yet we've got people sitting in this room that have been married for over 40 years. We've got people in this room that have been married for 50 years. Okay? There, how long? How many? 51 years. Okay? It, it, 60 years. It, it's, it's, that's God's design. God's design is for one man and one woman to find love and passion and patience and kindness and endure it all together for life here on earth. Okay? It's not, it's not, man, it, Somebody texted me the other day, they were, they were down in the dumps about their marriage and they were listening to country music. I said, what is wrong with you? If you're down in the dumps about your marriage, don't turn on country music. I mean, you're going to be sobbing in the middle of the floor like a puddle. You know, and, and they were. I said, you need to turn on KSBJ and get uplifted and get up off the barroom floor. Amen. You know, because... When you start listening to country music and you're already sad, the dog's dead, the, the car's broke down, your wife left, the kids are running around in their drawers, it's bad, it's bad. Don't listen to country music when you're sad. That's not in the Bible, that's my view. <coughs> Turn with me to page 484, Proverbs. Oh, man. 484. Who's preaching up here? Who's preaching up here, Rusty? You just clean the kitchen. Don't worry about me. I got this. <laughs> oh, man. It is 492. Here, Rusty, you come finish out. I'll go clean the kitchen. You come finish up here. I was double check. Chapter 6, verse 16 through 20. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> That's not the right scripture, though. That is not the right scripture. Troy, every week we're doing this to each other. <laughs> hey, I had to double check you this time. You know what, though? That'll fit. Here we go. Huh? That's right. Thank you. It is chapter. It is six. Man, I'm going to tell you what. 616, not 1616. 6, go to page 484 like I said the first time. Y'all quit arguing with me. Here we go. Page 484, Proverbs 6, 16. There are six things the Lord hates. No, seven that he detests. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that kill the innocent, a heart that plots evil, feet that race to do wrong, a false witness who pours out lies. A person who sows discord in family. My son, obey your father's commands and don't reject your mother's instruction. Okay. Haughty eyes. A lying tongue. Feet that run to do wrong. All of these things are involved in what this gentleman or this person is doing to their spouse. Male or female. It doesn't matter. If you're doing these things, you're wrong. Okay? We just learned the six, the seven things that God detests. Haughty eyes. What does that mean? We're looking at somebody the way we shouldn't be looking at them. A lying tongue. We're keeping secrets or we're telling the truth to cause somebody to, to, to stumble. Hands that kill the innocent. A heart that plots evil. If, if you're married, okay, evil is a big word. It's a scary word. People don't like the word. They don't want to use the word evil. But if you're plotting, if you're, if you're uh, coveting, if you're thinking about having sex with someone else and you're married, you're plotting to do evil. I'm sorry, you are. 
a false witness who pours out lies, a person who sows discord in a family. Sowing discord in a family. You're a family. You're a husband and a wife. You may or may not have kids, but you're still a family. You cannot sow that discord. Okay? Go to 19, Proverbs 19.1. That is on page 494. I got that one. Better to be poor and honest than to be dishonest and a fool. Better to be poor and honest. There are so many things that we could wrap around this Scripture in our lives. Okay? I mean, our attitudes, the way we talk to people, uh... It's just, the list goes on and on and on. It's better to be poor and honest than to be dishonest and a fool. If you think for one second that being honest with your wife about having sex with another person is the right thing to do, then you are the second part of that sentence. You're being dishonest and a fool. Okay? It's just that simple. That simple. We do not want to cause someone else to stumble. But we always have to remember that no matter what we do, it's between God and us. Okay? We will have to, we will have to answer to everything that we have said and done our entire lives. Right. So be, be, be very cognizant of the way you speak to people, especially your spouse. Don't, 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 don't push the buttons like I did. Don't, don't be that guy that's sowing that discord or that woman that's sowing that discord. Don't, don't be that person that's causing your family to be in an uproar. Okay? Turn to, uh, turn to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 through 33. I changed that on you, Troy, sorry. Page 898. Ephesians... Chapter 5, verse 22. For wives, this means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife, as Christ is the head of the church. He is the Savior of his body, the church. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. For husbands, this means love your wife just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean washed by the cleansing of God's Word. He did this to present her to Himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. These two Scriptures, you, you really can't have one without the other. Okay? And that's the other thing that young couples don't understand. In order, in order for a wife to submit to her husband, he needs to already be treating her like God was treating the church. Okay, if, if, if ladies, if, if you're being treated like garbage, and you're being beaten, and you're being demeaned and cussed, and uh, you know all the terrible things that go on in this world, there's you feel like you need to be doing that because that's the, what the husband is demanding of you. He's beating that out of you. Okay. If it's not if it's not being reciprocated both ways, then you're you're missing the meaning for the marriage. You're missing the design of the marriage. Okay, you're you're. It says that you must submit. What you're doing is you're bowing down in fear, ladies. Now, there's a big difference. Okay, big difference. If if you're if you're hurt today, if, if there's someone that that has has just destroyed your person in a relationship whether you're married or not come see me okay come see me because you're you're not understanding God's design for a relationship for a marriage and uh, we don't want to see that okay we want to find you some help we want to get you some help guys same thing if you're being abused okay if you, you, you can't you can't treat the lady that you're with like she's the church and lay down your life for her and she's whooping on you all the time. If she's telling you you're worthless, you're no good, you're a piece of dookie, whatever. Okay, you can't do that. It's hard to do. You're doing it out of fear if you are doing it. And that's wrong. So come see me. Come talk to me. If you're not comfortable, ladies, if you're not comfortable talking to me, 
there, there's, there's godly women in this church who you can go talk to, okay? Just please find somebody to talk to because we want to help you out of that relationship. We want to help you find out what it is that's, that's causing you to be in that turmoil. Turn with me to Romans chapter 13, verse 9. We're almost done. Romans chapter 13, verse 9. For the commandments say, you must not...